All right, so the first rule of conservation of energy had to do with the total energy of the system. The second one has to do with just the mechanical energy of the system. Remember, total, uh, the total energy is made up of mechanical energy and non-mechanical energy. And we're now going to talk about this one. And this rule is actually the one that's the most important uh, at this point in physics, okay? So the mechanical energy of a system is conserved if the system is conservative. Now, this is kind of a crappy uh, rule because it doesn't really tell you much. And just like how the other rule worked, it will depend heavily on the definition of conservative. So a system is conservative, and this is really crappy too, if no non-conservative forces do work on it. So if there is a no, if there is a non-conservative force, and I'll tell you what that is in a second. If there is a non-conservative force acting on the system, then the system is not conservative. And if the system is not conservative, it means that the mechanical energy of the system is not conserved. So conservative system has to do exclusively with mechanical energy. Total energy has to do with isolated system. Um, mechanical energy has to do with conservative system. Okay, so this means that the work done by non-conservative forces equals zero. So remember, we have internal forces and external forces. We also have conservative forces and non-conservative forces. So there's two ways of categorizing forces. Now, conservative versus non-conservative is pretty easy. Uh, for the most part, there's really only four forces you have to worry about, and I'll tell you which one is which. Conservative forces are going to be um, gravity or more technically the weight force, right, gravitational attraction, and any kind of um, spring force. These are conservative. So you just need to remember that weight and, cons and, and spring are the only two conservative forces. Non-conservative forces are any kind of applied forces. For example, if you push on something, the force of you, okay, or any kind of friction is non-conservative. Okay, now there are some properties here that you should probably remember, especially if your professor likes a lot of conceptual type of questions, right? Conservative forces. The idea of conservative forces is that there will be some transfer of energy, but that the total mechanical energy of the system is conserved. Remember, mechanical energy is kinetic plus potential. So, for example, if an object is falling at the absence of air resistance, it's gaining kinetic energy while losing potential energy. Kinetic energy has to do with velocity, so it's getting faster. Um, potential energy, so it's gaining kinetic energy. Potential energy has to do with height. Gravitational potential energy has to do with height, for example. And if something's falling, it's losing height. So you're losing one while gaining the other, but the total amount of energy, the total amount of mechanical energy, stays the same, okay? The total energy there stays the same. So the energy is transferred from one to the other, um, but the mechanical energy is conserved if you only have conservative forces. If you have non-conservative forces, they will add or remove the total amount of mechanical energy from the system. So the total amount of mechanical energy is not conserved because the number changed, right? Um, and we'll see a lot of this. This rule is more important than the other, but you should probably know both, again, especially if your professor likes uh, conceptual type of questions, something like this can show up in, in multiple choice, and the distinction between the two is subtle but important. Right? So I have an example here to help illustrate the difference between uh, internal and external and conservative and non-conservative. Okay? So it says here, each arrow below represents how energy in a system changes due to a different force. Indicate whether the force is um, internal or external or a conservative, non-conservative. So this, this bigger box here, the red box, is the to total system. The system is made up of objects A and B. So the total energy of the system is just a combination of A and B. And here, A, I show all the different types of energy that A can have, all the different types of energy that B can have. Remember, total energy um, is mechanical plus non-mechanical. Okay, and mechanical breaks down to potential and kinetic. So this is a diagram showing all the possible energies or all the possible categories of energies that these two objects can have. This first arrow here represents something coming from outside of the system. So this is the work, some force coming from outside of the system is doing work on the system. Because it's coming from outside, it is external. So number one is external. 
Number two, three, and four, all the other two, three, and four here, these are all forces that are transferring energy within the system. The system is a big box, so they're all internal. Okay, so if it's trapped within what we define the system to be, then it's internal. If, if it's a force coming from outside, it's external. Okay, for example, if you have a box, and I say the system is just a box, and then you come and you push against the box, you're not part of the system, so your force, your push, is an external force. Therefore, the system is not isolated and the total energy is not going to be conserved because you are adding energy to the system, okay? Now, is it conservative or non-conservative? Conservative and non-conservative has to do with whether the mechanical energy changes. Well, let's see. Here, you're bringing some energy from the outside, so the mechanical energy must change. You're adding potential energy which is part of the mechanical energy, or removing, right? Um, so the mechanical energy here is, is changing, so this force is non-conservative, okay? Now, force number two, you're going, you're, you're transferring kinetic energy into potential energy. In this case, both of these, kinetic and potential, are mechanical energies, so the total amount of mechanical energy doesn't change because the transfer of energy stayed within mechanical energies. This is a conservative force. Here, uh, we're going from kinetic of this object to potential of this object. Now, you might think those are com two completely different objects. Well, but the mechanical energy of the system is the same. This guy lost some mechanical, and this guy gained some mechanical, but the total mechanical energy of the system is the same, even though transfer, uh, the transfer of energy is happening uh, between objects, okay? Conservative. Here, just within B, Kinetic energy is being transferred into other types of energies, non-mechanical. So you're losing some mechanical, gaining some non-mechanical. So because you're losing mechanical energy, this is non-conservative. All right? So that's the basic idea, just so you understand the distinction between internal, external, conservative, non-conservative, and also the rules that determine whether the mechanical energy of a system are con is conserved and the total energy of a system is conserved. In terms of practical applications, not much of this will be used in problem solving. Um, I'll mention these when we get to that point. Uh, but again, this is especially useful if your professor does conceptual questions. All right? That's it.